Hey guys, myself and this is the visual see another problem on which go. Self-dividing numbers. A self-dividing number is a number that is divisible by every digit it contains. So they are given an example. So the given example, let's say one or three. Then this is called a self-dividing number if it is divisible by every digit present in this number. So if the number is 128, so 128 by 1, yeah, it is divisible. And 128 by 2, yeah, this is divisible because it's a even number. Then 128 by 8, the third number in the digit. So it is, yeah, it is also divisible. Hence, uh, you can conclude that this 128 is a self-dividing number. So, but if you take this number into count, so 103 by 1, yeah, it is divisible. But 103 by 0, 0 is not positive divided any number. So, this is not a self-dividing number. This is one of the cases which we need to handle. It may be 17 also. So, if something is a number 17 by 1, yes, it is divisible. But 17 by 7, no, not easily. And this is not a 70 by the number. And this is also one more three also not a 70 by the number. Or content it is a self-dividing number. So a self-dividing number is not allowed to contain the digit 0. You could see here, right? See, see if it contains 0, then any number dividing by 0 is not possible. So that's why uh, the number, if contains a 0 digit, then that is not a self-dividing number. Option. So then given two integers left and right, return a list of self-dividing numbers in the range left Right. So they are given two digits left and right. So here it is from 1, 22. So all the numbers coming the range between 1 to 22 are uh, we should check whether the numbers which are the numbers are self dividing numbers. 1 to 22 means 1, 2, 3, 22. So each number we have to check whether it's a self dividing number or not. If one is a self dividing number, then add that to our array list and uh, return that as a list. So 1 is self dividing, 2 is self dividing, 3 is self dividing, 4 also. Because 4 is divisible by 4 only, nothing other number is present. Then I have to find and return a list of all self dividing numbers. You can see the return type is list integer, hence we will create an array list and um, we will figure out whether each number in the range are self dividing or not. If it is self dividing, then we will add that particular uh, number to the array list. So what's the approach to solve this problem is, as I said before, um, there are range of numbers. So left, comma, right. Okay. So we we'll learn the follow. Follow can start from i equal to left, then i lesser than or equal to right because the last number is going to continue and i plus plus. So at first, uh, as I said before, uh, if there is a number called 128. So, how do you get the number uh, each digit in the number? We do the modulus of our operation. So, 128 modulus 10. Modulus will give, will give the remainder 8. So, next again perform 128 by 10. That will give you 12. So, once you have 12 now, again you perform 12 modulus 10. That will give you the next unit digit number. So, next 12 by 10. That will give you 1. So, 1 modulus 10. Will give you one, then one by ten will give you zero, and we stop the loop here. So this is what we need to handle the condition for each number. So in between handling uh, performing this condition, the cases which you need to handle is if, if the number contains zero. How do we get to know this number contains zero here? So as I said, see first we perform one more three a modulus ten. So that will give you remainder three. Fine. Uh, then what we perform is 103 by 10. That will give you 10. Then again we perform 10 modulus 10. That will give you 0. So this is the case. Important case that we need to handle while performing this operation. So one that is one thing. The other case would be which we need to handle is yeah, it is divisible or not. If in, if in any case we found out that 128 modulus 10, uh, modulus 10, or 128 modulus 10, fine. So 128 modulus 10, once we are gone, then we have to check 128 by 10. I um, mean, 128 modulus 8, that is easy equal to 0. Okay. Then for this case, 128 modulus 2. 
we are forming the modulus part is equal to zero. If, if any posi uh, position of the loop we get this is not equal to zero, then we just break from the particular loop. So we start with the following i equal to l, but till i uh, all the uh, range elements and i plus this. If you take the first number, let's say it has one zero three, then so first store that number in a array, uh, in a number called n, and n equal to i. So why are we storing this particular number in a variable called n? Because we have to perform these operations, right? 128 modulus 10 will then we get some digit, then 128 by 10 equal to that. So n will become n by 10. So simultaneously what we have to perform is i modulus 10. i is nothing but n here, n modulus 10. That will give you some number that we have to store in for n. Then once you do that n, we have we need to perform i by i modulus n. We have to check this thing. If that is equal to equal to zero. So to do this, after we do this, if it is equal to zero, then what we do is n equal to n by ten. So that next again iteration will start from here. So that's why n equal to i. So once you have n equal to y, y n greater than ten, right? n greater than zero. So n until n greater than zero. So at first we need to check the zero case. Zero case is nothing but what if you get like 10 modulus 10 is 0, right? If you get 0 here, then you can't perform like 103 by 0. So this is not possible. Hence, you will uh, you declare variable in n equal to whatever n is present modulus 10. So that is the first step. So once you do this, you have to check whether if n is not equal to 0. If n is not equal to 0, here it was not equal to 0. 1, 0, 3, modulus 10 is 3. It is not equal to 0. Then we have to carry out this perform operation or this operation. That is, what is what i modulus. We have to check if i modulus whatever n is equal to equal to 0. If i modulus n is equal to equal to 0, then do n equal to n by 10. So that you will take up the next remaining digits. Instead of 128, you will take 2. So here, instead of 103, uh, 103 modulus 10, we got 3. So later, what you will perform is 103 modulus n. n is something of 3. 103 modulus n is equal to 0. If that is equal to 0, then we perform n equal to n by 10. Otherwise, if that is not the case, we are in this case, Quantity of modulus it is equal to zero. So you perform n equal to n by 10. So you will get 12. Then again you perform 12 modulus 10 and you check for whether uh, like this 2 is equal to 0. If it is not equal to 0, then I will perform it. Here, uh, if you see 103 modulus 10 is 3 and then 103 modulus 3 in this case, that is not equal to 0. That is not equal to 0. So we else condition it is just break from the loop. We need not to consider that number itself. This is one case to break from the loop. The other case to break from the loop will be the before if condition. What if this m modulus uh, m is not equal to zero, uh, is equal to zero? In this case, ten you get it. Right? So ten modulus m is zero. So one zero three by ten will be zero. So that's why once you get zero, you just break from that part. So. After all these operations, uh, uh, and still the number survives, like every modulus is equal to equal to 0, right? then we have to add a particular number to the array list. Like how do we do? We define our array list called ARR and uh, AR dot dot. Like, uh, how do we check that particular number is um, divisible by all the digits? By the end of this follow, which should be equal to 0, n should be equal to 0. So if n is equal to equal to 0, then ARR dot add of i. That is going to be true. Then again the follow will go to the next one. So the whole operation which summarizes if I need to do that like let's say there are two numbers. There are two numbers one zero three and one twenty eight. 
So at first uh, we have a uh, we do the left to right range that is what we call it. So if you want to take more from twenty eight, first uh, while n equal to i zero, so in n equal to i. So while this n is greater than zero, it will be greater than zero. It check. Perform the modulus operation. That is one twenty eight modulus ten. That is equal to eight. This is it is not equal to zero. So hence this is not equal to zero. We check whether the number one twenty eight modulus eight is equal to zero. That is this is not equal to zero. Since this is equal to zero, we check for the next digit. Modulus will be two also. Modulus is one. For that, what we do? N equal to one by ten. So one twenty eight will become one twenty eight by ten. So that will give you two. So n equal to n by ten is again same equation here. So now twelve minus ten will be that is will give you two. This is not equal to zero. So since this is not equal to zero, what we perform is one point eight eight. That number minus is two. That is easy for you. Yes, it is equal to zero. So Now we have performed modulus eight, modulus two, and so we got to know these are uh, the digit parameters divisible by eight and two. If we check for one also, that's why we do one twelve by ten. That is equal to n. N is equal to n by ten. That is equal to two. So again, I'll instead of writing the L there here. So once you have one, then again we perform one modulus ten. That will give you one, which is not equal to zero. And then again we check for one twenty eight. Modulus one, which is the remainder we call one. So last digit. So eight we have divided uh, two or two modulus we did. Now we are doing for one. That is equal to zero. So this is equal to zero. In second we perform one equal to one by ten. Uh, n equal to n by ten. So one by ten we will give you zero point something, but it will be only up to zero. So now by this time we have n equal to zero, which is now greater than zero. Hence the value will be greater than zero. But it has passed all the cases in the value. That's why. Now we have n equal to zero, right? So after this value, we check whether n is equal to zero. If n is equal to zero, after this value, we check whether n is equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, it is equal to zero. This is we add that particular i value, that is one point eight to the array list. So that is how we perform. So if we take into count of one zero three, hundred and three will pass the first condition. But when come when it comes to second condition, we have ten in this case. So ten minus ten is equal to equal to zero, which is equal to zero in this case. So, so that you cannot perform one zero three by ten later, as if you perform one zero zero by modulus two. Here you put see one one twenty eight modulus two, but one zero three modulus zero is not possible. So that is where the iteration stops. So this is the logic behind the problem. We we'll quickly pull this up. So at first define an array list of integer type. Called A R A equal to U R A list. So once R A list is defined, now we have to solve for in I equal to left, I less than or equal to right, equal to zero conditions must, and I plus zero because the last digit also we need to take the entire range, including the numbers in the range. So In n equal to i, we initialize because we have to perform the operation on that number. That's it. So while this n is greater than zero, in n equal to what do we perform? N modulus ten. So that each bit plays as it will be. So now we have to check if this n is not equal to zero. If n is not equal to zero. This model is modulated. If it is not equal to zero, then we look for the operations. That is, if i modulus n is equal to equal to zero, if that is equal to zero, then we have to perform n equal to n by ten. So that every iteration one point will become two by ten, it will become one. One point eight here it is. It became two by, then it became one. So yeah. If this condition is i modulus n is not equal to zero, else we just break from the loop. Go on. While loop will not happen, we will go to the next iteration. So this else is for this condition. How do we get n is equal to zero? For that also else we have to do break break from the while. So these are these two are the two conditions which we need to do. 
So after all this while loop, if it still persists to manage n if n is equal to zero, after all the while loop, then we have to add that particular i value to the array list. So arr dot add of i. Otherwise, you need not to add. So at last, we return the array list. been accepted we submit this yeah, I hope you guys have understood the problem so the easier logic is to solve the problem by yourself in a book and then come to the coding part so that you can easily you can write the code and if you have any those please uh, drop it in the comment section and we will come up with the other video next session please subscribe to the channel and keep learning thank you